Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm the blogger behind BrighterDarling.com. If you are new to my channel, thanks for checking out this video. This is my 10 minute mom makeup. I am a fairly new mom. I have a six month old baby girl. It's my first one, um, but I have always been obviously into beauty if you followed my channel and my blog for a few years now. Um, but having a new baby definitely takes a toll on your getting ready time. And that is just, unfortunate for someone who loves beauty and makeup. So um, that didn't stop me from putting on makeup every day. I still get myself ready every day. So if you are a mom or just somebody who wants a quick routine that makes you look healthy and glowing but easy and lasts a long time and the products are simple to use, then this routine will definitely be for you. Um, it really just focuses on the skin. I'm someone who feels like if my skin looks polished, the rest of the stuff can just take a back seat, especially during every day. Um, and yeah, so if you're interested to see how I got this look, then just continue watching. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. So I've already prepped my skin. Um, Every day I do a very simple morning routine. I basically splash my face with water to rinse off like usually retinol from the night before. Um, and I have been using Rodden and Beale's Lash Boost. So I like to just like rinse my eye area off. And then I'll go in with an exfoliating toner. Um, I go back and forth using the Biologique Retchery Lotion P50. Um, I use that all throughout pregnancy. They make a pregnancy safe version and now I've gone back to the original 1970 version or I'll use the Paula's Choice 2% um, BHA which is really good at clearing pores. I've been actually using this one a little more lately. I'm finding it's giving my skin a little more of a glow um, and relieving some congestion in my pores a little better than the Biologique. I like both but I've been using this one a little more. So, um, and then I'll just go in with a vitamin C serum or some kind of a brightening serum. I'm all out of my vitamin C serum, so I will be ordering more in the upcoming Sephora VIB sale this April, but um, I've just been using the Polish Choice Brightening Essence right now just to finish it up. I have a little bit of this left. It's really nice and hydrating, so um, that's what I've been using the last few days, but like I said, I do normally use a vitamin C serum. And then of course you have to wear SPF. So this is one I've been using all winter through now even the spring. It's the Drunk Elephant Umbra Sheer um, Physical SPF 30. When it gets a little more warm out and my skin gets a little more oily, I will switch to Paula's Choice Resist SPF 30, I think it is as well. Um, I will link that one below. It's a little more mattifying. It also has a slight tint to it. Um, it kind of counteracts that white cast you can get from zinc oxide. But I like both of these very much. This one's just a little more hydrating if you have normal to dry skin. And I prefer uh, physical sunscreens like zinc oxide based sunscreens because they do not bother or congest my sensitive skin. So that's where we're at right now. Let's just get right into it. What I will do first is use the Hourglass Stick Foundation. This is a godsend if you are someone who's always in a rush or a mom on the go because you just slap it on your face literally like this. This is how I apply it. You can even use this a little bit like a concealer if you don't have really dark, really bad dark circles like I do. Um, and you can reapply it throughout the day like if you have to add more coverage later on. But honestly, I have never received as many compliments on my skin as I have since using the Hour Elastic Foundation. It's not a new foundation, but um, it took me a while to pick it up because I was worried it would be one that I would blow through really fast and it's not cheap. Um, I used to use the Maybelline Stick Foundation back in high school. Shout out to that, what was it called? Like Instant Ready or I don't know. It was like a Maybelline stick. It was navy blue with silver writing. If you know what it was called, let me know. Um, but I swear I had my mom going to CVS for me back in high school, picking me up a tube every month. Um, I just felt like I blew through it. Then again, I also didn't set my face with powder back then, so that definitely played a part. But anyway, the stick foundation from Hourglass is not the same. It lasts a lot longer and um, a little goes a long way. So like it's high pigment and yet it's still um, like 
very pretty finish on the skin. So yeah, like I said, I've had people say, oh, your makeup looks really nice before. Or, what foundation are you wearing? It looks so pretty. But I've had people actually say, your skin looks pretty when I use this one, which is a different, different uh, compliment, you know? So yeah, um, also I did have a hard time. Another reason I didn't pick this up quickly was I had a hard time matching my skin online. It just seemed like the colors ran very yellow and I'm a yellow golden tone person, like as you can tell on my skin on my chest. Um, but this foundation even seemed too yellow for me. But anyway, so I'll slap that on, not anything, you know, too perfect here. And I'll do this step occasionally, okay? This is not an everyday kind of a thing. Um, the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I will use this if I find that under my eyes in this area is looking a little drab. And today it do does. My allergies are really starting to kick in. It's like been warm this weekend. Um, so I will use this here a little bit under the eye almost too to brighten and give a little more radiance to the skin. But honestly, like I said, this is not every day. So I just want to be clear with you that this is just if you find like your baby was up really late or you have bad allergies like me and you just need a little extra, this is what I'll do to give my skin more of a glow and fake, um, <laughs> well rested, a more well rested look. And that just gives you more of like a natural sheen. It's not really like a concealer, although it has some coverage to it, but it just gives your skin a little extra once everything's all done. Okay, then from there, I have been contouring a little bit with this Hoola Stick, um, another cream product, but I like literally slap this on like so. This is literally exactly how I do this every day. And yeah, hide that double chin. This is where we're, what we look like, people same brush and then I buff it out. It kind of just gives you a little bit of bronze and contour, but so natural because it is a cream. And I'll just buff it out really quickly. And this obviously blends out really nicely. On my skin, it's not as like intense of a color. So if you're lighter than me, it will definitely show up more, but I like that it's just a hint of a little something. And it makes it easier for me to apply less powders later on in the routine. I do on my concealer. So I go back and forth. I'm using up both of these. So this was in my Project Pan Empties. This is the, oh, my battery's gonna die. This is my um, MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC30. This does not have as good coverage as my Tarte Shape Tape. And when I have these dark circles as bad as they are today, I need the mama. <laughs> so I will go with the heavier coverage formula. This is really good, very brightening, but just not enough coverage for me today. So I will use this. This is in shade medium. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the battery as I do this, which is not easy. This is my Sephora Pro Airbrush 57 Concealer Brush. I talked about this on my blog in my 2018 favorites. It is a holy grail brush for me. It's like a finger without having to like dirty up your skin and gives like very similar results to the beauty blender without having to go and wet that sponge. And I don't know, I'm not always getting ready near a sink. So sometimes I can't get my beauty blender wet and then I forget and I'm lazy. So the finger, this, this brush really helps get the job done. And then I'm just buffing out little spots that I see um, some brush strokes or that I need a little more blending. And then I blend a little on those lids a little to cover up any redness, especially in these corners. All right. And so you can see like the skin still has that glow from the Charlotte Tilbury. It's like a natural radiance. All right. Then we will powder. So I will go in with the Glow Skin Beauty Pressed Base. I use shade Honey Light with just a little Laura Mercier puff or any kind of puff. And I will pat under the eyes especially because that's where 
my creasing tends to happen. Plus, I wear sunglasses every day because I'm either in the car or taking her for a walk. And right here next to my nose, I will get um, like nose marks from the sunglasses. So I will press around the eyes. That's really all I do for the powder. And then I will take a big fluffy brush and just put a little bit in my T-zone because that's where I get the most oily. But I do not put this powder everywhere. I have a different powder. Probably seems extra, but it's partially because I'm using up my Project Pan empties and partially because I like the, fit, the finish. This is the Hourglass Ambient Powder in Luminous Light. It gives a beautiful radiant finish to the skin. So I just kind of pop that everywhere, particularly in the spots I didn't put the other powder. And I'll just slap it on her in no real uh, order. You'll see, like you still can see the um, contour from the hula stick under. And that is exactly what we want. Okay, after that, I will switch to my highlighting brush. This is that Sephora Pro 98 that I love, and I will go in with a very serious highlighter. This is the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. Obsessed with this, it's very intense. I will use this as an eyeshadow. So we'll slap this all over the lid. Gives a beautiful glow. Very intense. Okay, and then we'll put it on like a regular highlighter. So in this shape, like a C. There we go, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. A little here right on the um, bridge of my nose, a little on the upper lip, a little down here on the chin. And that is where we put that. Then I will switch to like a bronzer blush brush and take my bronzer. This is Max Bronzer and Refined Golden. It has a little bit of a shimmer to it, very warm tone. So that's why I use that contour stick because it's not as uh, warm. And I'll just apply it right along the hairline. And you have to be careful because obviously it's pretty pigmented. So even with that, I feel like that was a little much. I have to just use the concealer brush to buff that out a little more. Okay, and then right along where the sun would hit, I'm using the lightest hand with this because it is seriously pigmented. A little on the nose. Following those similar places where the holistic was. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. And then I'll also use it as eyeshadow. So. Pop that right over where the where the highlighter was on the eyeshadow. This is like not any kind of uh, science <laughs> for eyeshadow. Pretty basic. And then we will use the same brush, and I'll use my blush. This is the Mac blush in Gingerly. It's a matte blush, also from my Project Pan empties. And I'll go a little bit on the cheeks. Very light hand. And see, it is a little pigmented. Not a little, it's <laughs> decently pigmented. So I will let that sit there for a second, but I'll also use this as eyeshadow. So it all kind of pulls the look together. See how it all works together. And then I will go back in if I feel like it went a little too hard on the cheeks with the ambient lighting powder from Hourglass. And kind of just buff that out on the cheek and it will blend it all out so it looks soft and natural and glowy 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 pretty all right now that we've got the skin done oh this camera is stressing me out okay we'll do brows my two holy grail items the benefit gimme brow and precisely my brow what i've been doing lately is going in with gimme brow first to kind of clean up any foundation or powder that has accumulated on the brows, which will then lessen the amount of pencil and quicken the length of time it takes me to put pencil on the brow because I'm not having to fill the entire brow in with pencil. Um, so yes, I find this works nicely. The only thing is you kind of have to do this part first, let it dry and then finish up with the pencil. So what I'll do is I'll put this gel on first 
And if you've got good brows, you might not even need to do anything else. Um, but I'll put the brows on first, then I'll go in with my mascara, which is the it Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I'm gonna put on one, maybe two coats of this. It is a very dramatic mascara. My battery is probably gonna die, so I'm going to actually stop um, filming. I'm not gonna show you the whole application of the mascara, so I'm gonna put one coat on and I'll come right back, so just give me a minute. We're back with the mascara on. Look at this mascara. I talked about, <laughs> I talked about this in my Sephora VIB sale must pickups. It is a dramatic mascara, but I love it. Like, it is very volumizing, very lengthening. I only will put it on the top um, for this everyday look because I feel like it opens the eyes more. But, you know, you do you. If you want to put it on the bottom, it's totally fine. But I love this. For my mom makeup look, I actually really love this mascara for everything, but especially for the mom makeup because it packs a punch with little, minimal effort. So anyway, now we can go back to the brows. So obviously we have the uh, brow gels now dry, so I will go in with the pencil. And um, I have done two things slightly differently with this brow thing, the first brow makeup. The first thing was putting the gel on first. The second thing is I'm finding that defining the upper part of my brow is more important than um, going in and carving out the bottom as much because one, um, the bottom of my brow, if I keep them cleaned up, isn't really my issue as much as the shape of the top of my brow. Number two, since I have semi-hooded lids, which means like when my eyes are open, you don't really see much of my eyelid. Um, if I keep focusing on defining the bottom part of the brow, it pulls the brow down and then I don't see even more of my lid. So if I define more on the top, it pulls the whole eye look up. So that's what I've been doing. Plus, it's great because you, you use less pencil. So as you guys know, I do... Sorry, my computer's freaking out. I do love Benefit Brow Pencils. I do go back and forth using Goof Proof or Precisely My Brow. Goof Proof is a little bit of a thicker pencil itself. So it's better if you have fuller brows or need less defining. Um, I am like kind of in between. Like I don't have the thinnest brows, but I don't have super thick brows either so I go back and forth depending if one's on sale it doesn't really matter so much to me um, and that is pretty much all I need to do is just that top so sometimes I will go a little on the tail here just for a little added sharpness but I really don't go too crazy with using pencil and I, I feel like it goes so much faster so that's the one brow done and now here's the other one just gonna need a little bit of it basically just defines more, you know? This is the brow that needs a little more help. You always have one. So, I have to focus a little more on this one's tail. And then up at the top here, for me, for some reason, this brow hair, like it all like goes in, so I have to fake it to even out the other one. And then I go a little more light-handed in that inner corner because I have a scar here. So hair doesn't grow anymore. And yeah, I'm just slightly going over that arch, but that's it. Brush it through. The brow gel's still there, so it doesn't really need any more, but that's really it. And, oh my gosh, I just put like the bottom part of the cap on the top. And gosh, I had turned it down, because otherwise I would have ruined my entire brow pencil. And then we just finished off with lip. So um, I, this is my go-to, my holy grail lip is my Charlotte Tilbury Bitch Perfect Lipstick. Um, I'll go back and forth using Pillow Talk Lip Pencil or this little guy. This is, um, what's it called? Nude something. Nude. Iconic Nude. Um, either one of these, whether you use Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk will give you a peachy or pinky more lip. This one gives it a little more of a nude, but I'm obviously trying to finish this one up. So I will go in with this. And then the lipstick, I'm almost done, look. I will be repurchasing this, but it's my favorite nudie peachy pink. All right, guys, I will just,
just take out my hair and it'll either look like this or it'll be in a ponytail all day. Uh, today we have some errands to run. It is Sunday. So it'll probably stay down. I'm probably not working out today. So yeah, this looks a little messy. I don't really care. That's it. My skin just looks really healthy, glowy, but not too much. There's a little bit of definition on the eyes, um, a pretty natural lip color that goes, gives me just a little bit of health, and that's really it. I know, like, you know, it might not be the most glamorous look, but it honestly takes me 10 minutes. I go really quickly, and yeah, so I hope you guys found, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if there's any products that you haven't tried yet that you... Um, are interested in trying I would say my top recommendations are definitely the hourglass stick the hula stick and um, the hourglass uh, finishing powder are definite like obviously that is like the majority of what's giving my skin the look of like what it looks like so that's what I recommend and yeah I'll talk to you guys later have a good one